Hi, this is the WTF SDK quest creation tutorial part 2. So in the previous tutorial, we've basically created all the background information that we need in order to get a quest working, uh, mostly through the quest editor. So in the next step, we are going to basically uh, utilize all the things that we've done before to actually incorporate the quest as a playable element of the game. So the first thing that I'm going to do is prepare what's called a quest giver character. And really, um, I'm just going to reuse this merchant NPC here that we've created through a previous tutorial. And we are going to change his behavior so that he, ac he can actually hand out and complete quests. So the first thing that I'm going to do is head to the quest tab. Uh, and here, the first thing that you want to edit is the custom greeting that the quest giver hands out. Now, unfortunately, we won't actually see this um, when we test the character because when the character is handing out one quest at a time, uh, it shows the quest that's being handed out directly instead of a separate panel that has the custom greeting. But um, I am going to enter a custom greeting nonetheless in case uh, we have this quest giver give out multiple quests. So um, this is also a good time to introduce the bracket system. Uh, the bracket system is basically a way for you to customize NPC greetings so that um, things like names, class, race uh, could be tailored to the character um, that's playing the game. So for example, bracket name is going to basically get replaced with the name of the character when the player actually sees this specific greeting. Um, you can also specify race class by using bracket race or bracket class. Um, and basically to create a bracketed phrase, all you have to do is use the square bracket before and after the label that you want to use. And that's where the identity markers come in. Basically, if you go back to um, either the player character editor or the NPC character editor, um, and you look at all the identity tags that you've created, um, the phrase that you want to bracket is the one in the category section of the identity tag. And obviously, the value is the text that would actually show up uh, when the bracketed text is being displayed in the game. Anyway, um, back to the quest editor. So in order for the quest that we just created um, to be handled by this quest giver, I am going to add a quest handled item by pressing the add button. And I am going to change the quest that's being tracked from nothing to the one that we've just created, find some flowers. So by default, a quest giver would handle every aspect of the quest. Uh, he can hand out the quest by being the quest giver, he can complete the quest by being the quest finisher, and he can also um, give out advices during the quest by being the progress checker. So by default, uh, all three are being checked. You can obviously uncheck the items um, as necessary in order to uh, customize the quest giving process. Um, for now, we're just going to leave these alone because we only have one NPC who's trying to handle everything about the quest. Now, um, um, the quest is currently being handled by the character, but um, at the same time, there is uh, at no point where the character actually gives out the quest as a behavior. So what we want to do is go back to the Actions tab. And if you remember um, from our character creation tutorial, this character basically cycles between the idle and the walk actions. So what I want to do is to change it so that the character is able to hand out quests uh, during both of these actions. And to do that, all you have to do is change the secondary type from nothing to quest handling. So I just changed idle there and I'm going to also change the walk action to 
the quest secondary type. Um, you kind of see this little funky um, graphics problem where the quest exclamation mark is a little bit too low. Uh, that is because I did not adjust the bounding box of the character when um, when I made the animations that are responsible for this character. Uh, it can be easily fixed by going back to the animation editor and changing the um, the hitbox of the characters to the proper size. But uh, that's kind of beyond the scope of the tutorial, and it's and I'm just going to be lazy here and leave it kind of alone. Anyway, um, that's basically all I have to do with the character because once I've assigned the quest giving secondary a type to each of the actions. Uh, the behaviors that actually utilizes the actions is going to cover the rest. So I am going to save now and handle the second portion that's required for the quest, which is the item dropping um, that's in the zone. So I'm going to go back to my starter zone. There's a couple of things that I actually want to do. Um, the quest mentioned that the flowers drop from the chapel, so I want the um, so I want the items to spawn at this point. However, I also want to present uh, at least some difficulty in order for the player to kind of work for their quest, basically. So instead of instead of spawning at the chapel, I am going to move this character to the well. Uh, now I can also move this character spawn by dragging it on the minimap. And so the next thing that I want to do is to make sure that the player spawns at the well. Um, and that's not a problem at all since I've said that already. So the first thing that, the first thing that I want to do is to go to the items panel Basically, um, now I can control the item spawning. And I'm going to head over the chapel here, hit new, which creates a new spawn at the chapel location. Now, instead of a regular spawn, um, which basically only spawn one instance of the item, I want it to be a spawn area. And to do that, I change the type of the item spawn. Obviously, I need to have it selected beforehand from a single spawn to a respawn area. And as you can see, um, instead of a single icon, now I have an area that I can work with. And you can scale the size of this area by dragging the left and right edge. And this obviously also works on the minimap if you want uh, to scale it over a longer distance. So what I want to do is to have this entire area be a possible spawning point for the flower item. And to do that, I change the target of the spawn from nothing to flower. And I want to say, have it spawn nothing initially, and have it spawn a maximum of three flowers. So that basically, um, it, would, it would have three instances of the flower item on the field at most, at any point in time. And I'm going to leave the spawn interval to one second so that the flowers spawn relatively quickly. Um, so one more thing that I want to do, because basically the works, the quest works right now as it is, but um, I want to add one thing, and this you probably want to do for every item spawn that you use tailored to a specific quest, unless obviously you want the design to be different, um, is to add a requirement for the spawn. Uh, what the requirement does is it basically prevents the spawn from being active unless a certain requirement is being fulfilled. So the requirement that I want to add, and I did that fairly quickly, is to, and in order for you to work with the requirements, you want to go into the requirements panel. And to add a requirement, you hit the requirement details, which is uh, which allows you to add specific requirements item by item and hit the new button and I want to change the requirement type to quest where I only want the item to spawn when the quest is in progress now there's a host of items that you can use um, 
for quest related requirements and I'm going to leave that to the wiki so and I want to have the find some flowers quest as the quest that's being tracked that's in progress so when you read the requirements on the left panel you would see that um, the requirement is player must have to find some flowers quest and it has to be in progress in order for this spawn point to work so I'm gonna hit OK and you would see that there is now one condition required in order for this particular spawn to work so I'm going to hit save and now it's time to test. So this is obviously a completely new game and if you have previously saved the the game session you can um, reset the game by resetting the character at the, at the starting screen. And now you can see that the the merchant is now also a quest giver with the quest exclamation mark. So I'm going to click on him and here's the quest. Um, here's the quest name. Um, here's the quest description uh, dialogue and here's the precise objective. So once I accept the quest and I can see in the log that this is under the tutorial category which I can uh, minimize and maximize. Alright, so let's go and collect some flowers near the chapel. So when you move to the chapel now, you can see that the flowers have spawned. And I can pick up quite a bit of it actually. Alright, so I am going to head back to our quest handler. Uh oh, he actually walked off the area. So couple of things that you want to be aware of is when you assign such a simple AI to the character there is a very real possibility that he would just walk off the stage. Um, there is a way to to have the character check to stay relatively close to the spawn point but I'll leave that particular detail to the wiki. So now that I've completed the quest by collecting the flowers I can turn it in and I've gained half the experience I require for the next level. And now when I go back to the flower field you would see that all the flowers are despawned which is exactly what I want. So that's basically it and I will see you in the next tutorial.